Welcome to Nerd Digital Brew. Okay, for those of you who can't be here today, I'm going to talk about the difference between what makes a good per picture versus what makes a great picture. And you have to be aware I'm going to talk about those techniques and those concepts that we discussed and how each one is applied here. So remember that you are looking to create some great pictures and that you need to have three pictures that you show to me to understand concepts. One will be use of light, one will be angles and perspectives, and one will be rule of thirds. So we've talked about camera settings and how those work. And so I'm going to talk to you about what makes a great piece of photography. Now here's the picture, and I've pulled these from the past. Almost all of the pictures you're going to see come from kids that were in the Vision Tech program. Because if I'm going to get you to that next level, I need you to understand the difference or have an awareness of what makes great photography. It's not your equipment. It's you and what's in your head and how you see things. So that's, it's got to do with awareness of perception. So this is a picture that's a great example of angles and perspective. So if you look, this is actually looking through the glass lens on one of the dollar horses downtown, which makes a unique angles and perspectives picture. And the focus, as you can see, goes through the glass and is upon this area here. Okay, so how could this picture have been better? Well, I have the only problem I have, it's a great angles and perspectives picture, is that so much of the picture, the composition-wise, is blurred. And that is not always the best thing, but it is a unique angles and perspectives picture. This is a good photograph, um, and it would do well as far as understanding angles and perspective. It might not do as well if it were being graded on the fact that the majority of the composition is blurred. So, I mean, that kind of gives you an idea of how Mrs. Dink looks at your pictures. I look that you understand concept, but I'm also going to look at everything, including how you frame the picture, what you put there, and how you focused the content. And I, hopefully that makes sense. I mean, there's, it, it's not as subjective as it sounds. It's actually got some merit when you stop to think about what you're putting in a picture. Here's another angles and perspective picture a better angles and perspective picture by how it's put together. First, it's a unique perspective. You see there's the pump, and then you see through it, but look at the focus. See, there's great detail and depth here when it comes to focus. And even though this is blurred, it's because it's really not the attention point, and you've got great use of light and a different contrast. This picture, for example, while ex exhibiting angles and perspective, is a better picture as far as the entire picture than this one. Can you see the, the focal point, how the focus is so much better and how this is less detracting? Okay, now let's look at an even better angles and perspective picture. This is an outstanding angles and perspective picture for several reasons. One, focus. Two, content. Look where your eye is drawn. Do you see how it automatically pulls right to that yellow sign at the back? That is cool because it is framed within this unique angle and perspective, this triangular shape, and it too mimics that shape. See it? You've also great, got great depth, and notice that even though this is not the focus, there is still focus there. All right, so this would be great use of, this would be great use of concept. This is a better use of concept and content. This will, out of the three would be the best example of angles and perspectives. I hope that hope makes you see things. So let's talk about um, some other great pictures. This is a good picture of this rule of thirds. It needs a little adjusting. I would have um, moved this leaf just a little bit right about there. But here's what the artist, the person who took it, was trying to do. This is actually right outside of our building. It had just rained, and there was somebody's car had leaked some oil, so there was this great oil stain. It was just beautiful. And what they did is they took a stick and stirred it up a little bit, so you got this great variation of color. And then they found a leaf, and they placed it in the oil, and they took the picture. Now that's called staging, when you add content to create um, a great picture, and that's legal, guys. Staging is legal, adding light is legal. Um, to make a good picture, 
Staging is very real. When we go see Jim Richardson, one of the things he will talk about is how he stages some things. One of his favorite pictures of mine that he does is this picture of a ship in the, this ice flow. So there's this ship that's all white and gray and it's pushing through more white. And he had someone in a red coat stand down at the bow of the ship while he was up above and he took the picture. So among all this white and gray and blue and cold is this pop of red. And that is called staging. And it was wonderful. It's a wonderful picture. So yes, you can stage things. You can move objects. You can position them. Guys, that's what it's about. So nice picture. Um, I like it a lot. Here's another unique angles and perspectives picture. I love this picture a lot. Um, this is Claire Dink, actually. Um, I just remember this picture. What do you think this is? Believe it or not, it's our lamp out here outside on the, on, um, in the hall, our Wi-Fi lamp. But notice that you don't care that it's a lamp. Notice that what you end up seeing is angles and, and shapes rather than the fact that it's a lamp. And you've got monochromatic color that's lighted and varied. So you've got this nice dark shadow, light part, lighter shadow, and this circular structure. That's a unique angles and perspective picture. Why is that cool is that you no longer see it as a lamp. You see it as shape, color, and light. And that's why it's a good picture. Here's a great use of light picture. Notice this is right outside across the street. Look at how the light falls, how it changes the color of the door. How you got this great dappling kind of effect of light and dark through the trees around. And you've got this great look at the window and the concept of, of the contents within the window. It's a nice picture. Here's a good picture. Angles and perspectives. Now, technically, there's a lot wrong with this picture. For one, focus. For two, lighting. But what a great concept. It's kind of a portrait of someone. So this person actually stopped at the stop sign, ran around behind the car, and took this picture. They had the driver look into the mirror, so you get to see this self-portrait. And also, you've got the great car over here that adds an equal balance, which makes nice. It's just the focus is off. But you can see the concept is there. Love this picture. This is by Cordell Bowers. And look at the focus and the intensity and the color is. Look at where your eye is drawn. Do you see how it's drawn immediately to this pop of color right here? And notice how it's placed within that rule of thirds grid. Awesome. Notice how you have this, this great depth and variation of color. That makes a wonderful picture. And how the focal point is here and yet we get blurry later on. Nicely done. Use of light. This is actually the top, the ceiling at the high school. Early morning, um, look at how beautiful the color of the light is, how it comes across, but how you suddenly notice the texture and the grid of the ceiling because of what the light does to it. That's a great use of light. And notice how he positioned, um, this is Ty Swenson, I think, um, how he positioned um, his camera, the frame, to capture the most optimum use of light and you've got great angles and strength there. Okay, here's the master. This is Max Carlson, and Max graduated from me um, about three years ago. This is an incredible picture. I could look at it all day long. It's so rich. Notice you got this great monochromatic color. Monochromatic means having one depth of color, different variations of it. You've got creams and browns, and this incredible beautiful warm light that comes streaming through the window. But here's what's really cool. He staged this. So notice how he pulls the chairs apart to kind of seem as if it's inviting. And then you've got this great grass planter that creates this incredible depth of color and feeling right here. Beautiful picture. Uh, Max liked to stir the pot, so this is even, a, even one more. Um, Take a look at this picture and see how questioning it is. I love this picture. A great, a good picture will capture concepts and make you feel the beauty of what's around. A great picture will tell a story and make you think. And this is a great picture. Notice you've got um, the ape holding the human skull. So it's a question of evolution. And in the back, he has staged this clock and kind of turned it. And this is in blurred perspective while this is in close-up perspective. Wow. What a picture. Um, that was Max. He always liked to stir the pot a little bit, make you think. This is Amy Mullen. She took this. This is a great rule of thirds picture. Notice that your, your, your eye is drawn directly to the horse's eye, as it should be. And look at how she's placed it in the direct node in rule of thirds. Beautiful. Notice how the light falls right here. 
And notice the focus, the intense focus of her camera, how you can actually see the individual hairs of the horse. Really well done. Use of light and shadow. Ah, gosh, I can't even remember who did I think this is Carrie Albers. Um, notice where she positions it, so you got all this great depth around it. And each one of the little birds on the wire that's actually uh, this framed is set off. Rule of thirds, notice how your eye is drawn to the pop of color of the sunflower with, amid this grainy, rusty surrounding composition. Mimi Schultz did this. Um, nice use of light, and again, rule of thirds, how you got to focus on here, um, and a depth of color change. I really like this. Use of light, Jared DeMott. And notice how your eye is drawn to the truck and how he places that. The warm, rich color of the light as it flows through. Simple picture, simple concept, but wow, what incredible color, focus, and intensity. This was shot what's called an HDR setting on his phone, um, which captures all those layers of color. Use of light. Again, notice how the light changes when it's on the wall, because um, all of the brick is one color, but see how it looks like it's different colors based on the content of the light and how when you position the white, the color of the window, in the rule of thirds, how you get this sense of depth. Nice picture. This is one of my favorite pictures. This is Monica Rodriguez did this when she was a freshman. Notice how your eye is drawn to the white to the pop of color. Now, only my only criticism is I would shift that a little further. I would shift that pop of color to the right. Um, and capture the warm glow of the color is incredibly rich and you get this nice sense of reflection and depth as well. Next picture is Joe Refi. He did a really nice job here. Notice that you're, you've got the pop of color as your focus. Now my critic critique with him was you should have positioned the flower more here um, and had this great reflective composition of the city building behind which is what was part of the composition he was trying to capture. But he said, he told me, he said, there were people here, and I didn't want the people in the picture, so I had to focus the picture on the center. That makes sense. Sometimes we do have to break rules for great pictures. But here's the other thing I would tell you. If you're capturing a reflective picture, make sure you're not part of the reflection. I see a lot of photographers who miss that mark, who are so intent upon focusing here that they forget to look at the entire composition here as well. Make sure you're not part of the picture. Rule of thirds. Simple composition, but what great concept. Notice how your eye is drawn here, but you got this great monochromatic depth. Use of light. Pretty, pretty obvious. Sam Reed, use of light. How you get use of dark versus light. Great picture. This is Nels Peterson. Great pop of color of red against that green background. And look at this intense light, this warm, rich, yellow light that falls here. Notice how he positions the truck, the wagon at an angle in the rule of thirds. What a great, better perspective that is, and you get more depth. This is me. I took this. This is a great rule of thirds picture. I pop a color right here down here in the corner with all this rich composition. My parents' um, house burned down, and I came out and took this picture. Okay, here's a great picture. Good pictures versus great pictures. Here's a picture that tells a story. Notice how the angle of the bike. You got this pop of color, the purple against the green. But notice how the, bank, the bike is turned as if the rider is pausing, as if they're looking down. And it's like it, you could almost title this book, this, this picture, Journey's Not Taken. But look at the focus. Focus is here and rule of thirds where your bike tire is. But notice as you get further into depth, how it becomes blurry here. Focus here, blurry there. It's almost as if you don't know what the trail is going to lead. That's a great picture. Great content, great storyline. Um, last picture I'll show you. This picture. This is done by Jonathan Dalston. And notice what I love best about this is it's, got, it's a great rule of thirds picture. He, he placed the leaf there. But look at the composition around it. See how, how there's great light? I mean, you can see this in different layers. You can look into the water and see the bottom of the pool where it's just rusty and varied colors of blue and rust. But then you also capture this great light reflection above from the sky. And that's a great picture. Notice Jonathan's nowhere to be seen. That's what we want. We want pictures, your perception. We don't want pictures of you. 
So that's kind of a summary of how to think about your pictures. When we go outside to take pictures, you want to think about what's, I mean, it's a thinking person's game. What's in your frame? What are you taking a picture of? How do those rules that we've learned, rule of thirds, use of light, use of color, um, angles and perspective have to do with the pictures you're taking? And you want to keep all of those in mind to make great pictures. Hope this helped you see things. Bye-bye for now.